Welcome to this eighth in our series of tutorials on using AI tools. And in this tutorial, you'll learn about translation between different languages. So here's what you'll learn in more detail. We'll begin by looking at basic translation of text, and I'll show just how good AI tools are at doing this. Then we'll look at how you can create a generic translation project. This is specific to ChatGPT, but the principles apply to all other AI tools. We'll then look excitingly at how you can set up your own conversation list in whatever language you choose, who will not only chat to you, but also tactfully correct any errors you make. And finally, for the coders amongst you, we'll look at how you can translate from one programming language to another. For the non-coders amongst you, you can just blip over this bit. But that's enough of looking at me. I'm going to vanish now, as I tend to do at this point in a tutorial. And let's get started. So let's start off with a simple translation. I put in ChatGPT, please translate the following into French, and I'm going to translate the first sentence of The Day of the Triffids by John Wyndham, which is, when a day that you happen to know is Wednesday starts off by sounding like a Sunday, there's something seriously wrong somewhere. So let's see how it gets on. After one, two seconds, maybe, it comes up with, quand jour que vous savez être mercredi commence à sonner comme un dimanche, etc., and that was my attempt at a French accent. So just how good is this? What I thought I'd do is experiment. So I took the sentence as previously typed in, and I started off using Claude to translate it from English to Swahili. And that's what I got, Wakati Siku, I don't speak Swahili. I then took Gemini and translated that to Esperanto, and I took Copilot and translated that to Hungarian. And then ChatGPT again and translated that to Japanese. At no point did I tell any of these AI tools what language I was translating from. It had to infer it from the context. And I've deliberately chosen some of the hardest languages to learn and speak. And finally, I translated it back into English using Claude. And the results are almost identical to the original. So I got when one day, despite knowing it's Wednesday, you start feeling like it's Sunday, somewhere a big problem is occurring, which to me is virtually exactly the same meaning. So the answer to the question, how good are AI tools at translating text, I would argue is near perfect. And that's probably not surprising because they take the entire body of the humanities knowledge from the internet, which includes not obviously just English text, but also text in hundreds of other languages too although I'm a bit surprised it's this good at Esperanto. If you're going to be doing a lot of translating, it probably makes sense to set up a generic prompt. And that's what we're going to do now. What I'll do is create this prompt. Please translate, and then I've got a variable containing the passage of text I want to translate, and then into, and then I've got a variable giving the language I want to translate into. And I've added, don't include any explanatory text, just a translated passage of text. So what I can then do is fill in the name of my language. I'm going to translate into Spanish, which I'm trying to learn. And the passage of text I'll try to translate is the curfew tolls and another parting day. I've no idea whether the Spanish will be correct, but let's find out. So if I run that prompt, then you can see that after an uncharacteristically long time, it comes up with something which plausibly means exactly what I just said. Sadly, I can't confirm that. Now, obviously, what I've given you there is a useful prompt as a generic translation uh, request. But you can go one stage further in ChatGPT and create a new project by clicking the New Project uh, button on the left-hand side. So I'm going to call this Spanish Translation. And then click on Create Project. And after a short while, what it will do is set this up and I can start typing in my instructions to it. So my first instruction is going to be, I want to be able to translate text quickly. When I type in a prompt, please treat it not as a request, but instead as a passage of text to be translated into Spanish. Your answer should be a translation of my text in Spanish without any additional text or quotation marks. So that will work well apart from one thing I suspect, which is when I confirm that prompt, chat GPT, Okay, on this occasion it's answered in English, but it has a habit of answering in the language you've chosen. So what it can sometimes be useful to say is please continue to use English for all other messages you showed to me, however. But on this occasion, I don't actually need that. So what I can now do is I can test this out. So what I can do is type in 
All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. The famous quote from Animal Farm by George Orwell. And with a bit of luck, instead of treating that as a request or a prompt, it would just translate it into Spanish, and there it is. Watch what happens if I do the same thing with a new chat, though. If I go here and put in exactly the same text, it will treat it as a prompt. So I'm very excited about this new discovery, that you can chat to chat, chat GPT in any language you like. So I'm saying, please can we have a conversation in French? Now I've chosen French because it's the only language I can half speak. The rules are as follows. If I ask you to do anything with a written instruction, I will write in English and you should reply with English text. So I want it to speak to me in the usual prompt style in English. But if I speak to you, I'll try to do this in French and you should reply in French. Now what I wanted to do is correct my mistakes, but I don't want it to be too pedantic. So I've said, if I make obvious mistakes, please feel free to point them out to me, but don't nitpick. So let's give this a go. So immediately it's replied to me in French, which is not what I asked. So I'm going to say, repeat my previous instruction, which is if I ask you to do anything with a written instruction, I'll write in English and you should reply with English text. And now it's corrected that. So let's see how it copes with the French part of this. Now, every time I do this, it's different. So this may not be quite as fluent as some of my other videos, but let's give it a go. So you can click on that icon to use voice mode. Bonjour. Je veux parler si ta, ça te dérange pas des ordinateurs. Elle m'intéresse beaucoup. Pas de souci. Parlons d'ordinateur. Juste une petite remarque. On dirait que tu as utilisé « elle » pour parler des ordinateurs, alors qu'en français, on dit plutôt « il » pour ce mot. Mais sinon, c'est parfait. On peut continuer sur ce sujet sans problème. Merci. Avec plaisir. And at this point, I think I'm going to finish the conversation. And what you'll see is a transcript of everything which was just said. So as I read down this, you can see the French translation of what we were just saying to each other, which is really nice. So not only can you translate between spoken languages, but also between computer languages, which will either change your life or be of no interest to you whatsoever, depending on just how much programming you do. But let me give you an example. What I'm going to do is to paste in a request to translate something from Visual Basic VB to C Sharp. And the program I'm going to translate is this one. I chose this pretty much at random, my Wombat system. And this is of huge practical interest to me because I actually once had to translate every single class I've written from Visual Basic to C Sharp, and it took me ages. And this could have done it for me instantly. So let's see how it gets on if I try running this now. It's going to come up with something saying thinking longer for a better answer. So I'm just going to skip over that. And what it will come up with is basically insulting. It's come up with two versions. The first one is a straight version, including all the bugs I had in. I love that including quirks. Talk about passive aggressive. It's explained at the bottom that I made a couple of mistakes, which I hadn't spotted. And then it gives me the correct to C sharp, likely what I intended. Um, and this is a better version. So not only is it translating my text, it's improving it too. And then what I could do if I liked it just for fun is try the same thing in Python. And this time it would be much quicker because it already knows what the algorithm is and comes up with the answer immediately. Plus the fact it speaks Python natively, whereas all the other programming languages are things it has to uh, research. So as I say, if that's the sort of thing which is going to change your life, I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, you're welcome. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the first bits about the languages. There's so much more on our website at wiseowl.co.uk, including blogs, shorter tips, tutorials on SQL and VBA, hundreds of exercises in all sorts of different software applications, and a chance to test your skills in a few selected software applications. In addition to all of that, you can watch our video tutorials like this one in all these different subjects. Or you could consider booking one of our training courses, whether it be classroom, on site or online, or even as one-to-one -one consultancy. Thank you for watching.